So this is a very, very interesting problem. Um, it's a 188, 28-year-old um, God problem. Uh, and as you can see here, we have a God that is tethered to the edge of a circular uh, field uh, defense. So it was proposed by Charles E. Myers um, from Canton, Ohio in 1894. And you can imagine from that time all the way to 2020, there was no um, closed form solution uh, for this problem. Uh, and the problem is actually finding the length of the tether that would allow uh, the god to grace half of the field. Um, so what would be the length that would allow one to, it, it's from the very outset, it seems like a very simple problem, but this has been giving people a lot of problems. Um, so uh, as I said, uh, this is a got, uh, this is tethered uh, to the fence and it's allowed to roam as far as the tether can allow it and it grazes on this circular field. So what's the area of this overlapping um, point that is, I mean, what's the length of the tether that would allow uh, the god to grace only half of uh, the entire circular field? So the way we begin by approaching this problem is by drawing the two circles. Um, there's one representing the field and one representing the extent of uh, the god grazing. Uh, the field would be of radius r, small r, and then the god uh, locus or the, it's the extent by which it can graze is capital R. And so um, we can find that area by first uh, finding the area of A1, uh, which is uh, that uh, segment subtended by uh, angle alpha. So how we do that is we find the area of the sector, which is alpha over 360 degrees or over two pi times pi r squared minus uh, the area of the triangle, which is half the base, which is uh, the 2r uh, component on the base, so which is 2r cosine pi uh, minus alpha over 2 times the height, which is r sine pi minus alpha over 2. Now we can simplify that expression to r squared over 2 times, uh, in bracket, alpha minus sine alpha. Then the next, uh, obviously, exercise is finding area A2, which is also derived in the same manner, finding the area of the sector, subtracting the area of the uh, subtending triangle, and then, um, you know, it brings us down to capital R squared over two times in bracket beta minus sine beta. So we sum up the two uh, areas, A1 and A2, uh, to find the total area, but before that, we have to find the relationship between alpha and, and beta. As you can see here, from the center of the field to the edge is a radius r, so in the direction uh, of uh, the base here, uh, and then uh, from the center to point q, that's r as well. So we have a isosceles triangle so that the best angles beta over 2 are equal. So we have a triangle whose um, angles are alpha over two, a bit over two and bit over two, where the sum of those angles should be equal to two, two pi. And so eventually alpha can be derived as being two pi minus two beta. So uh, substituting um, that into the uh, final equation uh, where the total area is A1 plus A2, um, as you can see, we um, express in terms of alpha and beta and then uh, now substituting for alpha uh, in, with beta, uh, the expression is as uh, shown here. Now we also want to express uh, capital R, which is the radius of uh, the god grazing um, extent with the small r. And this we can do by using uh, this nifty um, theory where if we have a line that crosses the center of a circle and we are able to draw a lines from the edges where this line uh, touches the circle and uh, so that they they converge at another point on the circle, they'll always make a 90 degree uh, angle. And so therefore the 2R become the hypotenuse and then the base is capital R. 
Therefore, 2R cosine beta over 2 is equal to capital R. And so when we substitute that into the uh, expression for the area, the total area of overlap, um, it becomes as follows. And then we can use a double angle formula to now convert cosine squared beta over 2 to cosine beta, uh, as shown here. And so finally, um, we are able to obtain uh, the expression uh, for the total area that is consists of only beta and r, small r. Now, expanding that expression out uh, allows us to cancel uh, some terms, and we are left with um, only uh, pi squared pi r squared minus r squared sine beta plus r squared beta cosine beta. And we say that uh, the area A should be equal to half of the uh, area of the field. So pi r squared minus r squared sine beta plus r squared cosine beta is equal to pi r squared over 2, where we cancel out the r squared term, and eventually we're left with sine beta minus beta cosine beta minus pi over 2 uh, being equal to 0. So this is a transdental function. It means it doesn't have a closed form solution. It can't be solved using the analytical tools that we have. Um, so it's a hard problem to solve uh, analytically, but we can uh, solve it um, using numerical tools or numerical methods or uh, graphical methods by plotting the graph of beta cosine beta minus alpha over two and then of sine beta, and then finding the area uh, point where they intersect. Um, also, um, we can use this uh, complex uh, plane approach where if we have a point z naught and then that point happens to be uh, one of the roots of the function fz uh, we can show that by integrating fz along this uh, circular path around z naught um, in such a way that fz is the denominator and z minus z naught is the numerator where now the z minus z naught cancels out with the uh, factorized uh, component of the root, you'd get that uh, value to be equal to zero. Uh, for example, if fz is equal to z minus two times z minus nine, and then we have the circular path that encloses uh, z is equal to two, and when we integrate uh, z minus 2 over uh, fz, um, and first by also substituting z equals to 2 plus uh, e i theta, uh, such that dz is i e uh, to the power e theta d theta, um, that integral, as you can see, uh, is 0. Uh, so it proves uh, our point. Um, uh, we also have to note that if you have um, two points uh, within that locus, um, within that circular path, and then the value might not be zero. Um, but uh, using this formalism then, uh, we can now uh, spread the integral out, um, locating uh, z naught uh, as the uh, ratio of the integral of z over fz and one, the integral of one over f. So as I said previously, that um, if we have two points uh, within or two uh, roots within the area of integration, um, if you carry out the same integration, uh, you won't get uh, zero. So if you have root z1 and z0, um, that integral won't be equal to zero. And that you can prove by an example. Um, so the fact that uh, sine beta minus beta cosine beta uh, minus pi over 2 equals to zero, being our transdental uh, equation, uh, can now uh, be solved. Uh, or we can get a root uh, by equating fz to be uh, the values on the left side, which is sine z, co z cosine z minus pi over 2. And then we can also show that, uh, as we had alluded previously, that there needs to be only one unique solution within the area around which you, you carry out the integration. So if we choose from uh, 
x is equals to pi over 2 to pi and from y which is the imaginary part from minus pi over 4 to pi over 4 um, this area uh, in this area fc should only have one um, root and we can show that so we can show that fz has only one unique solution uh, within uh, the area we defined of uh, real um, value x is equals to pi over 2 to pi and uh, y uh, the imaginary part equals to pi, minus pi over 4 2 to pi first of all by substituting x plus y iy in place of z and then spreading it out um, we can also now convert uh, the cosine iy value and sine iy values by using these identities where uh, cosine of ix is equals to cosh x and uh, sine of ix is equals to i sinh uh, x and so we can now derive the imaginary and uh, the real part of fz and uh, in the region uh, pi over 2 uh, to pi in the real direction can show that the imaginary part of f z is greater than minus cos x y cos y minus sinh y which is greater uh, than zero in the y equals to zero domain and then it's equals to zero when y is equals to zero and then it's less than zero in the y is equals less than zero uh, range so in other words it's an increasing uh, the imaginary part of fz increases from the negative in um, when y is less than zero it hits zero when y is equal to zero and it crosses over to the positive uh, range when y is greater than zero then um, the other thing is we can also show that the real part is uh, zero at a unique point when y is equal to zero and we can also see that it, it has a unique point in the sense that um, the derivative of the real part of f of z is with respect to x is um, positive for y is equals to zero um, in the range uh, x is greater than pi over two and less than uh, pi um, so uh, and it increases from x is equals to pi over two uh, it being negative and then uh, it increases to the positive uh, please um, ignore the greater uh, less than or equal it's supposed to be less and also greater when x is equals to pi over 2 and x is equals to pi respectively so we know that there is a unique uh, solution for fz or a unique root within the uh, the domain of uh, x so the real part um, pi over 2 to pi and uh, imaginary minus pi over 4 to pi over 4 and so uh, the angle beta uh, is equal to uh, the integral of z where we see z here is in place of beta offers sine z, the inter, sine z minus z cosine z minus pi over 2 over 1 the integral of 1 over sine z z cosine z minus pi over 2 so um, also uh, the area of interest uh, is defined here um, and so we have a loop at center 5 pi over 8 and that loop has a radius of pi over 4 in the paper by Ingo Ulish, uh, he uses 3 pi over 8, but I believe it should be 5 pi over 8. And, and so um, that is shown here, uh, the region uh, where we that uh, root is located, uh, but also uh, we will be integrating uh, all the edge of, of that region. So um, the radius of uh, or the length of the tether should be equal to uh, 2r uh, cosine 
beta over 2. Um, apologies, I missed the over 2 there, which is equals to 2r cosine of the beautiful integral that Ingo Ullish derived over 2. So this is a beautiful, beautiful solution uh, that Ingo Ullish uh, was able to locate. So this is a close form of that GOT problem, the 128-year-old problem that has um, bedeviled um, the mind of many recreational mathematicians. Thanks to Ingo Ullish for the great work. Um, I think it's, it's a great solution, uh, very beautiful. Um, so.